Hey everybody, Jed here. This is episode 9 of This Week in Grip. Thank you for joining us today. I'm joined with Alan, and don't forget everybody, like the video for us. We really appreciate it if you can hit the thumbs up button. And if there's anything you'd like to see, don't be afraid to leave a comment. And we've got something else that we're going to ask you to comment on a little bit later on, but we'll get to that later. More importantly, Alan, how have you been doing since we talked last, my man? I've been doing real good, real good. Decent week of training. How about yourself? Good, yeah, man. It was a real good week of training for me. I got to work out with Luke three times this week, and it's probably the first time that I recall in, in several months. I, I don't even remember. He, between uh, different schedules going on and his work and – you know, he's he's working on getting ready for a wedding and all that stuff. It's just been a long time since we trained three days in the same week uh, on grip. So it was it was real cool. What were some of the things, some of the highlights from your week of training? Oh, the the biggest thing for me, I finally went a week without getting any skin tears. So that was huge. I've been uh, oh. a master when it comes to ripping my thumb open lately. So it was nice yeah. to finally get a break from that. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. that's... That's I'm glad to hear that. Um, for you know, first and foremost, and uh, did I show you the pictures of of my hand where where I've been getting skin tears? No, I haven't seen that. Okay, I couldn't remember if we talked about that or not. So, I so I've heard people and seen people talking about um, skin tears from grippers like the last couple of years, and that was something that I'd never really heard of before, and I couldn't really remember anything happening with my hands except for every once in a while setting a gripper I would uh, slip and it would dig into my hand but I've actually got a mark on my my left middle finger that keeps blistering and and ripping off my hand a lot lately from doing gripper work and um, you know it's it's actually it's in a spot where I can't even imagine this part of my middle finger touching a gripper and it's, it's it's really weird. Like I don't know how that happens. Uh, I, I'll have to. I, you'd have to see a picture to really understand what I'm talking about. It's it's very weird. It's almost in a spot where it's between my two fingers, like between the middle finger and ring finger of my left hand. It's a blister uh, tear that keeps keeps taking place. It's really, oh, that really is a weird spot. Yeah. 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 I've never. Uh, in the past, I don't remember ever having this issue. So who knows? Who, who the heck knows, man? I, I, I'm, I'm lost with some of this stuff anymore. Um, what's the? What do you want to start off with today, man? What's the? What's the big news in the grip world? Okay. All right. Well, I think um, first, uh, I guess the official announcement. So the NAGS committee has added a couple new members. In case mm-hmm. everybody hasn't heard, we've got Gil Goodman and Jared Goguin coming on board now. They replaced yep. a few a few long-standing members. So um, good things coming that way. They're a couple of good guys. Each have their own own grip strength equipment type businesses going. Uh, been real active. Lots of lots of contests and, and grip get-togethers. Been doing a real good job of of getting other people active and and keeping them active. So this should be a a real good step forward for uh, for grip sport all around. Oh yeah, no right no now. doubt about it. No doubt about it, man. Uh, two very very active dudes that you can tell they're very spirited about grip. So we're we are happy to have them aboard the team. It's it's going to be really really good. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, that's um I'm I'm really pumped about this. I've uh, I've always really thought really highly of Gil and 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 Jared does a real good job with everything too. So this is this is definitely exciting. Um, yes, and we've already we've already talked at length about uh, Jared's intros on his videos. So <laughs> you know that that really in the selection process that really played a big role. So sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> and. <clears throat> one other, there's a, another grip contest coming up that that hadn't been mentioned re- recently. It has it's kind kind of a, I guess overshadowed by by some of the other upcoming competitions. But the mm-hmm. Arizona Cactus Grip Shootout of 2017 is coming up on April 1st. So that's holy just, uh, cow! 
yeah, just a few How short did we miss away. that? I know it. <laughs> Dude, it seems like, like a, it just gets kind of buried. <laughs> <laughs> that's an annual contest. Man, dude, it, I'm telling you. It's it, like I can look at stuff and not identify it. It's it's just unbelievable how you can just pass right by something. Sorry about that. Aaron Corcoran runs that contest, man. Sorry, Aaron. That's that's a big mistake on on my part not not having mentioned that. So my apologies, my personal apologies to Aaron for not mentioning that. Gee whiz, that's a Aaron's run a lot of contests over the years. He's a good promoter. I actually went out to his October contest in 2015 and uh, competed with him. So yeah, that's that's going to be a good contest. There's I know there's I know there's people out there in Arizona that either haven't competed in a while or haven't competed yet. So it'd be cool if they got to that competition. Well, yeah, and it, it looks like it, it should be decent. You know, it's going to be it's going to be open classes for men's and women, so mm-hmm. everybody will be just going head to head with each other. Um, looks like they're having uh, twenty millimeter block set grippers, uh, two hand mm-hmm. euro, uh, two inch FBBC crusher, and mm-hmm. he's actually going to be hosting this. I think in the past a lot of these have been done at at, at his residence, and it looks like mm-hmm. this one's going to be at the Tucson Strength Gym there in Tucson, Arizona. So it should, oh, be, cool. it should be a good time. Yeah, on the grip board, it looked like he already had at least a half a dozen people signed up, some names that we know of. You know, there was, um, I'll have to try to see if I can navigate back there, but there was uh, Phil Koshaba was one of them. Tanner Merkel was going to be showing up for that. So that ought to be yeah. exciting. Should see some, some, monstrous, some monstrous numbers all around. And there's still plenty of time for other people to, to get signed up. He's, his website, for those that are interested, it's, www.az-grip.com. You should be able to find the information needed in there. Yeah, and I'll say that if if there's anybody that has never competed in a contest yet and you're hesitating about going, this is a great contest for you to go to because Aaron will show you exactly what you need to do. He will walk you through everything and, and give you the tips that you need so that you're you know, just because you're new and haven't done it yet, you know, don't feel that you're going to be left out in the cold or anything because Aaron's real good with that kind of thing, and, and he'll show you what you need to know. Yeah, the trophies. Uh, I don't know if you'd seen any of the pictures of those he posted at all, or, or was this, this news to you, this contest coming up? No, I, I had seen it, man. I, I, had seen, I had seen all kinds of stuff. I don't know why it didn't register in my mind to include it in our, in our calls. Uh, yeah, the he was making like gigantic grippers, right? Yeah, they're like I think aluminum handle and even aluminum spring. I, I oh. might be wrong about the spring, but they look. I'm looking at the pictures right now. They look real sharp. So these are some nice. These are some nice trophies people get to get to come away with. Yeah, yeah. Between Aaron and Martin. They uh, they both have worked together on prizes over the years, and they always come up with really really cool stuff. So, yeah, that's it's something that sets Aaron's contests apart from others, and that it's not just some equipment and gift cards and stuff like that. It's it's like one of a kind stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, he he does nice work. He has his his little custom shop too. He does a lot of things for people. His his workmanship is it's top notch. Yeah. Have you ever gotten any, anything from him? I haven't yet. I was looking at his site. He's got some a couple of um, revolving handle farmers uh, handles that look really, really interesting. Um, mm-hmm. That's a that's a neat twist on on that type of implement. That that caught my eye. I'm gonna I'm gonna kick that one around. That's something I've been yeah. thinking about picking up for a while. Just regular farmers handles, and I saw those. I thought, wow, that's a <laughs> that's a game changer. Real yep. Nifty stuff. Yep. Yeah. He uh, the he's done a bunch of gripper modifications for me over the years and I also had him replace handles on a couple of my old PDA grippers because um I used I wanted to grind down some grippers back in the day so I ground down my PDA grippers which I don't know if you've even heard of those before Do you, are you familiar with PDA P- yeah P- yeah that's design like associates yes yeah. Yep. So like they've gone out of business since then and you can't get those grippers anymore. So they ended up becoming like collectors item grippers. So 
um, you know, I look back and think that's a mistake on my part. So now I won't even cut a gripper. I, I just buy I just buy cut grippers. But um, I I wanted to have those grippers because they kind of set in between the normal ratings. Because you know how it's real hard to find like a like a 120 gripper. Yes. Um, yeah. So I have two of those. And I can't remember without looking at them what they were, like the, the specification of the grippers, but they both came out like 117 and 121 or something like that. So they're in like the perfect range. In fact, I just used the 117 yesterday for for speed closes. Uh, my hands were, were down. You know, the, my, uh, my peripheral nervous system seemed to be a bit fatigued yesterday due to training three days in a row. And... I could not do the 125 um, for audible clicks, so I bumped back down to the 127. But uh, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do that if it wasn't for Aaron because he actually replaced the handles that were cut with like new legitimate handles. So now they're like brand new again. So yeah, he's he's really good. I've also bought some of his kid grippers, the smaller ones. Um, oh yeah, those look yeah. real nice. Yeah, yeah. I bought one for uh, I bought one for JC, and it rates 15 pounds. She can smash it now, man. She's like making athlete faces and stuff on it. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> and they're nice. they're affordable too. I can't remember what I paid for them, but it wasn't you know, it was it was really affordable. So if you're looking for a one of a kind gift, and you've got a a youngster that you know, you think might be interested in having some grippers that actually fit into their hands properly, Aaron's the guy to go to. Cool. What else? What else is going on? Any other contests that have slipped by us? No, that was the that was the only one, hopefully anyway. I don't remember seeing any other ones that got buried in there. So Did you see the one that um that Paul Savage and Becca have been posting about? It's the European Grip Championships, I believe. I I have seen that. I haven't. I guess I don't even know when that is, but I've seen they're kind of doing a little a little blog deal on on YouTube, um, yeah. where they're covering their training and and introduce themselves. They're doing a really nice job with that. But I yeah. haven't followed much. I guess I don't know what the what the events are at the at the contest even. What did you hear? I'll about run that? down them. I'll run down them real quick. The date of it is actually 5-13-2017. It's in Arendal, Norway, which isn't Arendal where uh, – isn't that where the movie Frozen takes place, bro? Oh, is it? Oh, that, think. Oh, that sounds familiar. Well, that's like um, – that's like – this is like the biggest clash that could ever take place in the world of grip because – doesn't she sing "Let It Go" in Frozen? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of it's kind of you know like a, an oxymoron that we would be having a grip contest. Wait, dude, it was Aaron Dell. I forgot Aaron Dell. My bad, my bad. Close All on. right. So anyway, we'll uh, moving on from that since that again I got to buy the triangle so I can ring it when I'm going to tell jokes on here because they're they're going over like. <laughs> Church, but so what these are the events dude well, I love this contest already the brutalizer 60 millimeter rolling handle what's what's the brutalizer that's the LGC um, handle ah. that's, not, that's something that's supposed to be people claim from what I've heard that those handles are even they even offer more rotation than what we see on, on like the FBBC crusher handle mm. from what I've heard most people oh. say they're it's a, it's a, it's a tougher weight. It's it's not like a night and day thing. What we'd see a difference between like a crusher versus you know a rolling thunder, for example. But I think, generally speaking, you would pull less on the on those LGC handles than, than on a lot of the other ones out there. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, they've also got Vulcan Gripper with a 20 millimeter set. I'm assuming that's with a block. I'm not sure. Iron Mind Blockbuster Pinch. Ooh, jeez, man. Sick and twisted, dude. Silver Bullet fourth event. After doing like Max Grippers, pinching and brutalizer, you got to run through the Silver Bullet. Holy cow! Wow. 
and then uh, they're they're closing it off with the meat hook deadlift. Gee whiz, they're looking to draw some blood at this at this event, man. Holy cow! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, that man. blockbuster pinch record ought to go down if if Becca keeps up her work with that. It seems like every every time she pulls, she's over the world record. So. Hey, if she proud. keeps up what Good she's deal. doing, Alan, she's going to break the men's record, not just the, the women's record. She's she's killing it, man. She's killing it. <laughs> yep. Didn't she over, I just she got the uh, K on that, didn't she? Yeah, man. I just got a note from her. Let me uh, let me let me find this. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, boy, where is it? She just she just sent me a note on this. Uh, let's see where did I put it? Some of them. Okay, here we go. She did 33 kilograms on the blockbuster, and uh, man, I thought I had a little bit of a write up on here. She sent me the video. It's going to be in the it's going to be in the the final draft of the video. But I mean, these she's hitting these big numbers and they're coming up really smooth, like not having a lot of trouble. You know what I mean? She's doing she's doing them seemingly effortlessly on a lot of these lifts. So that's that's what I've seen. A lot of her they were they were solid they were solid lockouts, pauses and 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 soft set downs and everything. So she definitely got yeah. some plenty left in the tank, yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, if anybody if anybody has something that want they want to they want to catch our eye, be sure to use the hashtag this week in grip along with the video and social media. I actually started that hashtag when I put up the first show all those weeks ago. And then uh, our friend Ricardo Magni reminded us about doing that, and we haven't been doing that. So go ahead and use This Week in Grip when you when you upload your, your videos of PRs and such, and uh, it'll help us to make sure we don't miss anything that uh, is supposed to be coming our way. Uh, and then I also announced another contest last week too, Alan. I'm not sure if you saw it, but if anybody's in the Syracuse area on April 7th, you should be ready to get your hands all chalky at the Syracuse Man Show because we're going to be running the Syracuse Iron Hands, and we've got a light and heavyweight class for the men with a 93-kilogram cutoff. And then we've also got a women's open class. We've got three events. This is actually going to be taking place on a Friday night, by the way, uh, as part of the, as part of the man show. Uh, we're going to go wrist wrench deadlift because this is an R, uh, this is in tandem with an arm wrestling event. We're going to go with wrist wrench again. Then we're going to go with sledge choke uh, to an 18 inch platform, and then pinch block hold for time. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And you can get the entry form up on Diesel Crew real soon. So that's another contest that's taking place um, right coming up coming up very soon. Just that's that's actually the weekend I believe the either one weekend or two weekends after I go to Texas for the FitCon. So lots of stuff going on this spring, man. Lots of lots of opportunities for qualifying for nationals and getting your name on on record boards and and all that stuff. Yeah, yep. And I saw that. I, I remember seeing you announce that contest. Was that not? I thought that was on Instagram or something like that. It wasn't on the grip board, I don't think, was it? What's that? The Syracuse Iron Hands? Yeah. Yeah, it's on the grip board. I'm not sure if oh, I actually is. got it on Instagram. So. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I knew I'd stumbled across that. I just completely, completely spaced that one out. So. Yep. Yeah. No hey, problem. Hey, on the subject no of the. Of the wrist wrench that you're having at that, so you know Lane Snook was looking for a uh, for an original wrist wrench. Wanted to compare himself against against the guys over here, and I happened to have oh. a, an extra one that I didn't need. I sent it his way. So oh wow! For for you and and Gil Goodman and all you guys, you better start boning up because I think we're going to see some monstrous numbers getting pulled on that sucker when he sees it. Well, Lane needs to watch out who he's challenging here. Or else there could be a clash of the titans. <laughs> there could be a clash of the titans here, brother. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. No, I can't wait to see what he's able to put up, man. Lane's a monster. 
for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. He pulls some big stuff. That's for sure. So. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't know what you, you had two. You had two wrist wrenches. Or yeah, were you, you stockpiling know, the wrist wrenches up or what? I had no. You know, it was one of those deals. I can't even remember where I got it from, but the place it was like a. It was an arm wrestling type type supplier and they had it was like a buy one get one free deal or something like that or spend so much you wow. get free shipping or some kind of thing so yeah so i did that like i don't know a couple probably a couple of years ago now and mm. so the one's just been sitting underneath my chalk bowl just collecting crap on it and i've been using the other one and i saw he wanted it so i thought well geez why not you know <laughs> did you at least blow the dust bunnies off of it before you mailed I, it across the, the i, I, I did what? a little bit yeah yeah but it's got it's got that little bit of, of light natural seasoning on it now so mm-hmm. so he yeah. should really be able to rip something off the ground mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah did you yeah. see that uh jerome bloom put up a an attempt of his 2020 20 challenge not not recently um yeah Get on well, I don't know how now. recent it was, but he he sent me the video because remember last week we were like, "What's a double penny pinch?" You know? Oh yeah. What he's actually talking about is he's gripping it with both hands, the half penny. He's gripping the half penny with with both hands because oh, we were wow. thinking maybe it was an, an error on there, and he's actually doing the 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 double hub pinch. Yeah. The, the rim pinch. Yeah. No, he's <laughs> he's he's doing it. Uh, and it's 20 kilos, and he's trying to hold it for 20 seconds with both hands. Oh, that's got to be tough to get meat from both your – wow, I can't – Yeah. I don't I've even never... know if I could do it. I, I yeah, honestly don't know that. if – if I, I So um, yesterday I was trying to pinch something with two hands in the workout, and I couldn't, I couldn't even lift it because uh, uh, Dan, that guy from Canada – he is a no namer. I can't remember. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, Fleming. Uh, he did something where he was pinching with two fingers, and I tried to replicate that feet feet yesterday, and I was like grinding the the skin off of my knuckle, uh, of my of my ring finger. Like I physically couldn't find a way to position my hand in order to do it with two fingers. And this is another thing where it's like I don't think I could physically put my because I, I can't fold my finger in any further because it's digging into my palm you know so I, I mean I'd have to try it I haven't actually tried it but it, it may be it may be possible to work it out but it looked it looked extremely hard like that that challenge is is really legit so yeah there's not much real estate there to get to get it gripped like that so Right. I've I've never right. I've never even played with that at all. But that doesn't yeah, that's not a not a comfortable one, that's for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, no doubt. Cool. What else is going on? Um, so over on the grip board, there's currently a, a forty five pound plate hub lift up for vote. Looks like Gabriel O'Keefe's lift. Yeah. Um it's got a few votes already. I think it, it's gonna need quite a bit more, but he should be able to get there. Um you know, uh, uh, lately Mikhail Severson has been posting a lot of his of his daughter. He's got a 16 year old daughter named Shauna. A lot of her lifts on there. Sounds really? Like he's trying to get yeah things getting things built up. Wants to try to I don't know if there's a if there's a record for her age or class, but he's got a I think it's a hundred kilogram deadlift that he's got her that she's got her sights on rather, and mm-hmm. looks like she just PR'd with with 71k, and has been working on the the two hand pinch hit um 39.3 kilograms on that so that's not that's not bad alan where is he posting those it's in the um let me see if i can get back on that right now i think it's in the is it in the workout reports it might be let me um let me try to get on there once it pops up once in a while he's been he's been consistently adding to that let me see if i can just digging for it right now. I found something called Shauna's Axle Training. That's the one. Yep, yep, that's okay. the one. Well, that's cool. Good for her. That's great. Yeah, it seems like she's boy, she's got really nice deadlift form when she's when she's working on the axle. That's for sure. And um, yeah, and that Euro boy, considering that the mileage she must have on that, that definitely does not have the load of chalk on it like you'd see on a lot of the other ones out there. 
Oh no, it's just basically where the grip is. Yeah, yep. yeah. I can I can see the <laughs> the thumbnail of it. It's uh, it's not it's not caked up or anything. Right, right. So so yeah, she's got her. I wonder. If, <laughs> what kind of? I wonder if maybe see that's actually what my euro looks like on the inside. So I'm wondering if maybe they're training on one that is not quite as seasoned, and then oh, if, sure. for a contest they'll flip it back around for the one that's like more seasoned. I I don't know. I have no idea because this is the first time I've even. I don't even remember the last time I saw any of Mikhail's training, you know, of of his actual work. So, like yeah, I, I don't yeah, remember I don't what it ever have, looked like actually. before. Yeah. I only remember like a handful of videos that he's put up over the years. That's it. So right, good for right. her. That's cool. I'm glad that she's into it. She she looks like she's a very athletic person. So I, I wonder if she's done other sports and and stuff like that. Says what she's oh 16 years old. Yeah, cool. That's great. Yeah. Sweet man. Thanks for letting me know about that. I'll, I'll have to follow that a little bit more closely. Yeah. And uh, Tom Shabelli just. Posted a thing. He had a he had a YouTube video out. I, I watched that just this morning. He was talking about the, you know the the best inch dumbbell trainer, and mm-hmm. he was kind of going through a couple of things. You know, he's been on kind of an, an inch quest for for quite some time, and it looked like he sourced. I don't know if you if you saw this video or not, but but he contacted Gil Goodman and had him whip him up a special, a different type of rolling handle type trainer. It's kind of modeled after. I don't know if you've seen if you've seen Sorenex's two inch rolling handle. Um it, it I'm looks not kind sure. of almost oh okay. It it looks similar to that, but it fashions to the bolt the to the loading pin the same way that the tips tester does or or like the flask, that same type of system. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, you know, reach down, ready to grab it and, and lift. There's no setup or anything like that. You know, and it, it it's solid aluminum, you know, two and three eighths inch handle look like a really a really clever way of just a different twist on what we've seen as far as the handle attachments and stuff. So I thought that was really interesting, really neat concept that, that Tom had come up with and, and had Gil whip up for him. Yeah, that's it's neat. That it's, it's awesome yes. that we've got guys out there that are able to, you know, take some of these things from, from concept and, and make them reality, you know, in, yeah, man. The, from the custom standpoint. Because, I've, you know, I don't have the, the equipment or the know-how to, to personally do a lot of that stuff, but I've always had had some ideas and things that I wish existed. And um, yeah. you know, finally, we get more and more people able to do this. So that's that's awesome. Yeah. And and get the exposure, so it'll keep them it'll it'll keep them on with it too. Yeah. yeah. Very very innovative. No doubt about it. Cool. Mm-hmm. Good job, Tom. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. I'll have to look around and find that. Cool. Mm-hmm. So well, else, any other certs or anything like that? The um, that was it for the grip board stuff. We've got a new guy joined the Red Nail roster. I, you, you must know him, and Anton Torella. Yeah, I know him. Yep, I've competed with him a couple times. Um, a couple times at at least once at King Kong. I think it was at the first one, and then let's see. There was another time where there was a like a spring competition that Chez promoted and competed with him there. And I, dude, I didn't even know he was bending. I, I never. I, I guess I don't remember him even bending. But uh, I think he put that down pretty quick, right? Didn't I hear? Was it him that did it? And it was like ten seconds or something, or was that somebody oh, else? I, I, you know, I didn't hear. I didn't. I didn't see the video or anything. I just saw the the update come through from. From Nate Browse, because I know this was something he was working on. I I think he had taken a stab at it at at a previous competition recently. It might have been one of it might have been the Nate's last the uh, SGA three competition, mm. and okay. he got one of those vicious new red nails that it sounded like was was quite a bit tougher than the ones most people were used to, and it and it and it stopped him. But then he came oh. back and and nailed it this time. So huh. so good. Well, for that contest sticking with it. Yeah, for sure, man. That that contest went on for like a couple more hours after I left last year. So maybe that took place at that point. 
So yeah, and I could be I could be wrong about that. I just knew it was one of those ones. I think uh, Nate Browse was the official ref for it. It might have been a slightly different contest, but it was something along those lines. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, that's good to yeah. He had the fortitude to keep pushing. And and by the way, those those new red nails they are significantly harder than the than the older ones. There's no doubt about it. I put up a I put up a video trying to bend one of those, and I, I guess I got through it, but it, it wasn't easy. It sure wasn't. Easy. Of course, I mean, I'm not really a good bender anymore, but it was it was by far way harder to. There's no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. We had another um, couple FB, FBBC bars got bent. Uh, Barry Mares asserted the huge in the in the Grand Bastard bars. Awesome. That was just posted recently. Yeah, I don't know if you got the video yeah, clippings from that or not. I thought he was going to get those sent your way. I think I do have them. Uh, I have a note here about that. So if not, I'm going to try to track them down. But yeah, he was pretty he was pretty pumped about that, and I'm happy for him. Congratulations, Barry. Yeah, and how do those bars? You had gone through this with me one other time, but how do those compare to the to the red nail? Yep. In, in so terms the of difficulty. Yep, yep. the 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 way it works is the bastard bar is is pretty much the same as the red nail. You know, there's always variants, and you know they're not exactly identical when you put them on the rating device. But you can think of those as as being in the the same general area. And then the the way it uh, breaks down is every they cut a half inch off to get the next level of bastard. So you have bastard, then I believe it goes big bastard. So so the bastard is seven inches, big bastard is six point five inches, huge bastard is six inches, and then it just goes on from there. And the actual terms kind of escape me right now. But um, but that's that's how it is. There's a there's a half inch cut off every time, and then uh, okay. um, the the bigger bars have different names. So Hexa Bastard, for instance, is uh, a seven inch bar that is hex. It's the instead of being square or round, it's the hex shape. So that's pretty much the system that they use. Sure, sure. Okay, boy, a six-inch bar. That sounds <laughs> that sounds nasty. Not a lot of leverage there to work with. Yeah, uh, I think I was able to bend one of those back in the day, but I think I only did I think I only did it once, and I think I used someone else's wraps. Like, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, it's they they're, they're pretty they're pretty tough, man. They're they're pretty substantial. So, yeah. Nice. Now. Um, Branching off of Anton's certification, I don't know if you saw this. Uh, John Stepien, uh, on a hunch, basically, uh, strolled down to his basement and CCS the number three. He I totally smashed that. it. Oh, yeah. wow. Good for him. Yeah. Okay. Now, so uh, what I read was a, 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 a Milo, a copy of Milo, randomly showed up at his house and he was like hmm maybe this is a sign walked downstairs and smoked a number three with a with a credit card set and he said eh, maybe I'll think about the number three certification again because he was actually pursuing that last year for a time and then kind of got got away from it so wow <clears throat> pretty pretty solid to me yeah, I'll have to check that out. You know, I, I actually just got a, a copy of Milo showed up as well. I wonder if mine has the powers that his did. I'm going to have to go downstairs and take a crack at some of these. Yeah, man. Yeah, Boy. yeah. you better. You better do it, dude. You better get it on film, too. We, we don't get enough. <laughs> we don't get any videos coming from your way, dude. There's, it's yeah, like I video should. cameras do not exist. <laughs> you know? Video yeah. cameras do not exist in Wisconsin, do they? No, Sensei. What's that from, <laughs> Alan? What's that from? Karate Kid, the original. All right. Okay. There you go. There you go. You got one, brother. You got one. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Yep. Uh, oh. I put. I saw a video from Ben Mattingly. Do you know Ben Mattingly? 
No, I don't. He's 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 from across the pond. He's he's from Cork in uh, Ireland. But he put up a, a video of one of his longtime students, and her name is uh, Anya. I believe it's Anya. I I I I asked for clarification on how to pronounce the name. He gave it to me, and I have totally forgotten already. It's spelled A N J A, and I don't think I actually got the last name. But dude, she totally wiped out a blue nail from Iron Mind in 8.74 seconds. I'm not I sure what rap video. Yeah, I'm not sure what wraps she used. It may they may have been some leather or suede, but uh, still. I mean, she's, I guess, the second woman to ever bend a blue nail. She says she had a week, or uh, Ben said she had a week off of training. Her only warm-up was a yellow nail, which was a PR, and then she did a blue nail in 8.74 seconds. So the yellow nail is quarter-inch cold-rolled steel that's seven inches long, and then the blue nail is quarter-inch cold rolled steel that's six inches long, okay? So uh, she's in pretty much uncharted territory. He goes, as far as I'm aware, there are only two other women, so she's the third, two other women who have bent this nail. So this is a pretty big deal, and she made it look easy, a real testament to the transfer that building all other strength produces. So she's apparently, I mean, she's in fantastic shape, but you know, the primary focus of the training that they do is, is strength from all angles. So uh, they have a lot of cool gyms over there, man. I've, I've talked with a lot of the, a lot of independent gym owners from, from Ireland, and they, they, it's just a different system over there, man. It's, it, you don't, from what I can tell, you don't go to these gyms and just go get a pump on, man. You're in there, like, building serious strength. So it, it would be cool to, it would be, cool to go there and visit those and kind of check out the environment. I bet just feeding off the energy of the other members that are there, you'd end up setting PRs on whatever you train that day. Like, yeah, right. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yep. Now, yeah. Does Iron Mind have a separate roster for 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 women and, and these other nails? You know what? I, I don't know. I've never noticed. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, my my eye has been so far off bending like the last five years that I there could definitely be a list and, and I wouldn't know about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, buddy. But if they don't, hopefully they'll start one up. Yeah. Right. Right. Nice. Is it time for the Yuha watch? Is it time? Oh yeah. Might as well. Might as well throw that in. I seen he was back right. at it. What did you probably got some information that that I haven't I haven't seen yet. No, I don't have any other detailed information. But you know, during the the grip session that you uh, Luke and I had yesterday, uh, I saw that he put a video out, and obviously the rhabdo didn't do much to his grip strength because he took a nice stroll with <laughs> an inch dumbbell and two twenty kilo plates. So, yeah, yeah, looked easy for him. Um, yep, he's back yeah. at it. Yeah, he put up some highlights. I mean, we we went, we did a rundown of the stuff that he went through health-wise, physically, um, during last week's show. And this week he was able to do some, you know, some work with the quadriceps, the hamstrings. He was on the, the leg extension, the leg curl. Uh, looked like he was on the calf machine. Uh, I can't remember <laughs> if he did any leg press. He did some kneeling squats, uh, so he so he hit the legs from all angles and looked yeah. like he was, you know, looked like he was going through things pretty smooth. I doubt he's pain free again at this point, but sure enough, went ahead and mixed in a uh, a nice, you know, probably at least thirty foot walk with the inch dumbbell and two twenty kilo plates, and then a couple long holds, really long holds with double blobs at the end of the video. So. His grip obviously wasn't affected too much by the by the rhabdo, at least with right. static pinching and thick bar. Yeah, yep, nice. Yeah, so that's that's good to see. Uh that's good to see him being able to get get back in the gym and uh enjoy some training again. That's that's awesome. I didn't know how quick it would be that he was gonna be 
back at that stuff, and looks like he's right back into it, man. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Thumbs the, up for that. Yeah. On the subject of, of blobs, you know, um, have you put your hands on one of those um, those FBVC blob-handled grippers yet? No. Mm-mm. That no, they've been no, making? I have not. Oh, okay. I, you know, Gil Goodman just posted. There's a, there's a few of these floating around out there now, and Gil Goodman just posted a a video on Instagram with him taking yeah. a stab at one. You know, 140 RGC, and man, that just looks like a beast of a gripper. Yeah, I, mean, I can't even. It, that's just insane. Yeah, <laughs> really nice. Funny. Made. Yeah, the 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 rating doesn't sound too intimidating, but. Um, everybody said that the, they're pretty tough to close because of those larger handles. Now, are the, are the handles, uh, are they shorter? Like, is the leverage decreased because of a shorter handle, or are they pretty much the same same length, would you say? Oh, boy. You know, I guess I just assumed that they were the same, the same length as the other handles. Yeah. Maybe they are. Maybe they are yeah. different. There's definitely enough handle material available you know, on yeah. those, you know, on the blob to give you the full length one. So right. hopefully they yeah. standardize that way. But yeah, and I don't know. I just it was just something that occurred to me. So I I really don't know. Yeah. No, those look those look really nice. Those are nifty. Yeah, it's cool. You know, I think, but I think what we should do next is like start making some grippers out of like other stuff that hasn't been done yet. Like maybe like like a petrified cactus. <laughs> or you know some kind of like if you don't squeeze it with proper technique that it ends up like cutting off a finger or something like that wouldn't that be cool well, that would that would force you to really look at your gripper technique wouldn't it yeah right right yeah yeah <laughs> yeah man I, I mean i'm i'm just about there with this middle finger this thing's just about rub raw you know down to the bone so uh, I'm almost there right now with just the regular thing. I might as well go all the way with some kind of, you know, maybe some uh, molten something like that's just been pulled out of a, out of a campfire or something like that, like a like a like a like a an ember, uh, red hot like poker or something like that, or uh, mm-hmm. even a knife blade. You know, get some knife blades on the handles. I don't know. Seems like a good idea to me. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe yeah, not. Right. All right. What else? What else is going on? What else is going on in the world of grip? So did you see uh, Dan Fleming's got a, a blockbuster pinch number out there now. It looks like he finally got a hold of one of those devices. He's Who was it? 84. Dan Fleming? Or, or oh, Dan. Oh, oh yeah, un- okay. Unknown Dan. <laughs> no, I, I thought you said Darren. I thought you said Darren oh. at first. <laughs> Yeah, no, it looks like he hit about 84 pounds on it. I think it was 84 pounds is what he what he pulled on that. I think I might have seen that video, and that was uh, that was pretty impressive. I just, I, dude, I just hit, what did I put up yesterday? 80. I think 80, 80. or 81. And uh, that's, I think that's the best I've ever done. And uh, I, I just, I can't get a grip on there, man. It just doesn't feel right. The grip that I'm getting on there, it's it's the the three inch, the three inch. I'd rather have it be like five inch. I think. Like, is there any way to stretch those out? Can we like stretch <laughs> them out a little bit, or maybe like grip them the long way? Maybe maybe put another hook on one side and just grip them the long way. I think I'd be able to do it better. But yeah, he and um, that looked easy for him. I mean, everything that these guys are putting up these days, like these PR numbers. <laughs> There's no straining going on. It, it's supposed to be hard, guys. It's supposed to be hard. Let's go. It, it, you know, especially his lifts, they almost seem to happen in slow motion, too. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like it's, yeah. just, it's, it's not a grinder. It's just like you're watching that thing out of, like, a horror movie where all of a sudden kind of things, like, stand still. <laughs> it's yeah. It's sort of like that, you know. <laughs> right, right. Like somebody's gonna jump out of a bush and and grab you or something or yeah uh, it's yep. like lulling lulling you to sleep and then all of a sudden that scary face that used to be in the in the videos would jump out and scream at you and scare you because you've already been uh, you've already been lulled to sleep yeah I, I'll tell you Dan's footwork 
is getting really good. I, I forget what video it was that he posted recently, but it was almost like he worked in some Terioka footwork drills in order to get from the lift to the camera to the scale. And it was really quick, man. It was almost like he was like maybe the battery was going dead on his camera, and he was able to get everything so quickly. He was just really becoming very efficient with with this process. So I gotta I gotta hand it to him for that as well. Yeah. Did you see? Uh, you know, I was talking about John Stepien earlier, and of course uh, he's been down here a couple times training with along with James Fuller, which we've talked about. James Fuller is quickly becoming the madman of hub grip. And oh, yeah. John Stepien kind of laid out a challenge to him this week. I don't know if you saw that in the Strongman yeah. Archaeology group on Facebook. He, he, posted, he posted this, uh, this ye- it was like a yellow or a goldish-looking 100-pound uh, hub plate. And the, the hub on this thing looked extremely hubbable. It looked very inviting, you know. It was like you wanted to walk up and try to get its phone number. It was it was that inviting and attractive, the hub on this. And I was I, I posted on. I was like James, you need to lift this. And he he said, I already got you covered. So, um, you know, I was thinking you need to drive down to New Jersey and find this plate and like steal it. You know, walk off with it or something. He's already got one that's just like it, man. Some kind of like uh, Ben 100 plate. And it's uh, it, it it looks just as inviting as well. It looks like a very very nice hub to use. Uh, my the hundred plates the hundred pound plates that I have the hub doesn't look like that. It, it looks like you know this potentially sometime down the line someone could lift it, but it doesn't look nearly as nice and pretty as the two that they had shown on Facebook the other day. Yeah, I'm trying to find that right now. I guess I'm not able to. All these go back away. I just I just clicked join, so I'm probably not seeing anything that I'd want to be seeing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. But uh, nice. yeah, the way he's working on those things, if anybody could do that, I could see it being James Fuller that does it. No yeah. doubt about it. He had a really neat training technique. I don't know if you caught that. I can't remember what the what the name of it was. It, it was a really it was a really clever name for it. But he had a it was a forty five pound plate, and I think he had something added to the bottom of it. It was a ten or something like that. Mm-hmm. And he had it on top of a, a platform of some variety, and he kind of slid it, you know, sort of slowly slid it off the edge, you know, yeah. almost forcing him to 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 catch it, you know, to suddenly get the shock of the weight in the hand and. Yeah, boy, if that isn't a fantastic way of that's just a completely different loading method. That's really got to bring on some gains. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw that in once in a while. That's a that's a great. I'd never seen anybody do something like that before. That was really well. Great. It's a tremendous coincidence because if you remember during last week's episode, I said that I had just shot something that was, as far as I know, no one had ever really done it before, but it was applicable to just about every feat. And it's very similar. It's not the same, but it's very similar to what James put up. I think what he was doing was he had the the hub plate positioned on like a, uh, it was almost like a traffic cone. It was like a traffic, uh, like an orange traffic thing, right? Is that what it was? That could be, yeah. I'm going to go try to find that right now. I think that was on Instagram that showed up. He kind of posted in a few different spots. Yeah. Yeah. So it's and 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 those are you know those are like a barrel basically. They're it's it's hard plastic and it's very slippery. So it would allow the plate to slip off like that very easily. So yeah, I and he had a little name for it, and it was very similar to the name of the of the challenge that I filmed. Unfortunately, I was so busy last week with everything else, I didn't end up editing that video yet and getting it uploaded, but. I'm aspiring to getting it up this week so that everybody can see that. Because I think it's not exactly the same as what James put up, but it's similar. So I think it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that should be interesting. Yeah, what, yeah. what James is calling this the hub depth drop, and it looks like he's yeah. actually got a it's – a, it's a keg is what he's got it sitting on. 
by the looks of it. Oh, it was a keg. A, an, okay. a, an orange one. Yeah. Yep. But that yeah, is. You know wow. what? Yeah, he uses the traffic pylon for um, pullovers, the pullover and press drill at, at, the, one, <laughs> at the one location. When it's uh, when he's training out in blizzards and stuff, um, he does. I don't think he wants to get his benches damaged, so he just uses the traffic pylon. <laughs> nice. Yeah, he's got, Cause, a, cause he's got a lot of clubs. Why? Ones. Why make anything any more comfortable than it can be? Why lay down on a pad? You know, right. in USAWA, dude, you don't you don't lay down on a pad. You lay down on rocks, broken glass. You know, hard plastic. Dig your spine right into the hard plastic. All right, we're we're making tough guys here. We're not making yeah. wusses here. Okay. Pain does not exist in this dojo, does it? No, James Fuller. <laughs> Did you see? We were talking about uh, along these lines uh, not too long ago uh, in a different call. Um, did you see that Nick Rosendahl put up a post where he, he ripped a phone book into six strips? No, I didn't. Dude, was... he, took a, he took a decent-sized phone book, and he didn't just rip it in half, but he ripped it in six strips. I, I, nice. uh, I, think, I think the only person I've ever seen do that is Pat Povolitis. I'm trying to look for this. How did I miss this? Oh, yeah, there it is. When did he afford it? Wow. That's one that must have, yep, slipped under the radar. Oh, that looks yep. like good work. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, dude. I, I, I'm only looking at a, at a picture of the aftermath. Did you actually yeah. get a, a video of that? No, I didn't see it. No, I didn't see a video. Oh, I, okay. I'd imagine it took a long time. When you do yeah, multiple strips, amazing. yeah, when you do multiple strips like that, you really have to be careful that you don't spoil the book uh, on the first, like, couple strips. Because if you get a kink in the book in the wrong spot, it makes the tears almost impossible after that. So you yeah. have to be really careful. It's in, so it's not just a, it's not. You, you have to finesse it. You really have to finesse the tears. And I've only ever done, I think, three. So it's, I mean, it's it's a far cry from six. Nice. His uh, his steener eminences in his in his thumb pads must have been just on fire. Because you have to clench down so hard, so hard, man. For real. Right. Oh. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's see. Did you see? Uh, did you see Yuha Letamaki's little feet that he posted? Uh, you know how he always lifts the their um, like the barricade. It looks it looks like a concrete barricade that you'd see along highways where there's construction going on. Have you seen any of those? I had. Where was that posted? Didn't that end up in the grip strength uh, forum or uh, uh, page on Facebook? Yeah, I'm saw not that sure. Were videos over there. It's possible. I'm I'm not sure, but he uh, he he must have been doing it early in the morning because he he had to get a sip of coffee while he was doing it, brother. <laughs> nice. Had to get that coffee in there. I thought that was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Did you see? Did you see this Andre Glavatsky and yes. the monster lift that he produced over the last week? Yep, yep. Hit a total of what, 86 kilograms total. Yeah. So, yeah. So 20 kilograms added to the to the uh, 66 kilogram Silarukov inch. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a solid lift. Yeah. And that's the same. That's the same handle thickness as as our inches that we're using, correct? That's a let's see here. I don't know for sure. Now I oh, just yeah, I was doing a close. different I was I was doing a different conversion. So a sixty six kilogram is uh one hundred forty five pounds. So that's like one of our mid range um death grip belts. And then eighty six kilograms Let's see what that is. That's probably like 190. Yeah, right around there. Yeah, yeah 189. So <clears throat> that's a lot of weight. And if you've never tried that feat, 
it's really hard. You you have to basically strangle the handle when you're doing that, uh, so that the rotation won't take place because the plates sitting on top will shift. I don't know what those plates were uh, made out of, as far as like whether they had a coating on them or anything like that. I didn't have the sound on, so I didn't hear any clangs or anything like that. But um, you know, it looked like they stayed put. So this dude obviously has like a pretty phenomenal grip. I can't say I don't know if I've ever heard the name before because a lot of times when the when the Russian names come up, they're in like the script, you know, their native script, and the letters don't always transfer. So so I'm not sure if I've even ever heard of this guy, but by the sounds, he's very very talented. Which I obviously he's he's doing that much weight. So I just I just wonder I don't know what else he's done. You know, on top of thick bar exploits, not sure. Yeah, I'd never heard of him until until this one came out. So he's bound to have some other big lifts that we just haven't seen yet. Yeah, hopefully we get yeah. some more out of him. Yeah. yeah. On the subject of of Silarukov, you see our buddy Mr. Wide Pinch just hit a the twenty four kilogram blob plus two and a half kilograms. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Didn't that look too hard easy. for him. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, yep. Sticking with his, I, I, with his name. I mean, are, are they even? Are these guys even warming up before this? Like, or are they just are they just coming in out of eating chicken wings and and deciding to try a feat? I mean, what exactly what exactly is the method leading up leading up to it? You know what I mean? Well, I th- yeah, you know, and, and I've said it before too. When do these guys actually have time to train? Because it seems like they're just constantly going in and and smashing out more weight than they did last time, you know? Right. Never right. see the never see the vid the footage of them just putting the work in. So that's right. that's awesome. And, and he's uh I saw last week I believe last week he put up some more videos of really wide pull ups with weight added. So uh I tried that myself and didn't have nearly as much luck as he did. So uh he's got skills, man. He's got skills. Yeah. But, you know, so often you see uh, people that excel at grip, they also are very good at other things, like whether it's lifting or a complete other sport, you know. Um, quite often you see that when if, if someone is leading a category or, you know, so elite, uh, has hit the elite level at, at something, a lot of times they're good at some other aspect of the iron game or uh, some other type of athleticism, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely, you know, not saying you have to be a great athlete to be good at grip, but it is something that is an indicator of athletic potential. There's no doubt about it. Right. But at the same time, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure that there's mechanics, farmers, uh, of course, you know, um, blacksmiths, you know, people w- that work with their hands all the time, um, they could they could do some amazing feats if they were presented with the, the challenge items. Right, right. So those yeah. guys, I guess, would be more of like industrial athletes. So did you see some of Adam Glass's recent videos? Um, when did they happen, dude? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Oh, just this just this past week, he had a couple new ones. It looks like he got a hold of a one of the flasks. Oh, got to play around with that for a first time. Hit hit like two oh seven on the on the on the two hand pinch with the flask, kind of just his first time picking it up. Which that's not a bad number for your first time going after it. Yeah, so his pinch has definitely held in there through the years. You know, we haven't seen him. You know, doing a lot of what he used to do, but but that's right. definitely stayed strong. He even hit some some flask pull-ups, which we definitely haven't oh. seen too many people doing. So, right. as a matter right. of fact, there's just a just a few that I've seen come out with that. So, yeah, good for him. Yep, a lot more stuff. And uh, yeah, that's you know, awesome. You, you see, he got he got married yesterday. I saw something. Uh, I saw a picture of him and Dave Whitley. And it was, uh, what is the thing that you do the day before the wedding? It's the wedding reception or whatever, or the wedding. Oh, yeah. 
you know, the wedding party dinner or whatever it is. I saw that, but I no, I didn't uh, see the picture wedding. Congratulations, Adam. Yeah, yep, congratulations. Yep. Hey. <clears throat> cool. I wonder if they did any grip feats during the wedding or afterwards. <laughs> yeah, hard to say. I only caught a couple pictures, so it looked like a it looked like a real <laughs> nice time though. Yeah, cool. Cool. <clears throat> You know, one of the things that happened last weekend that I didn't really see too much about was the Arnold Classic. And, you know, I saw, like, a picture of Ode Haugen doing the Denny, Denny Stone lift. And oh, yeah. I think I saw I saw where Brian Shaw won something like $15,000 from Mark Bell's Slingshot Company for his yep. win at the, at the Strongman Classic. But I didn't see a lot of stuff as far as, like, you know, feats of strength or anything like that until, like, yesterday. Um, the guys at the concrete booth uh, ran the, the concrete challenge again. Um, if you remember last year, Luke and I went and helped out with that. And uh, But Jim Stepani Sr. is... Uh, an integral part of that. He's been involved in that for at least three years, maybe maybe longer. And I saw him put up a video of a guy, um, and I, to me, the, there was like no information. It just, uh, it was just the footage of him totally dominating, absolutely dominating the the feet where it's um it's it's a vertical bar attached to one of the I think it's the Donnie Thompson fat bell. And I think it was 83 pounds, and on the vertical bar he had a fat grip extreme, and this guy was passing it. He was doing like the mid-air transfer pops from one hand to the next for like five five uh, transfers each way. Did you see that? No, I didn't. Dude, it no, was it was, it was pretty. It was pretty. Uh, it was on Jim Stepani Senior's Facebook page. Okay. Are you are you familiar with him? I, I am. Yeah, I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna be checking that out right now. Yeah, check it out. So, and and what I was saying was, when he first put it on there, I I didn't see any information as far as like who this guy was. So, <clears throat> I said, who is this grip prodigy? And uh, so then, J uh, Joe Musselwhite actually ended up answering me, and I was like, well, what's this guy's background? So now I go back and look, and I don't know if it was there and I didn't see it or if I just totally missed it or if they snuck it back in later. I don't know. But I found out some information about this this total freak, and his name is William Norwood, okay? Now, Alan, you are being put on a mission, okay? I'm going to try to replicate uh, as well as I can my, my 80s trivia knowledge and I'm going to try to make this sound like um, the A team, okay? So if <laughs> if if you are willing to accept the challenge, the challenge, if you are if you can find him, maybe you can join the William Norwood team and get some serious workouts going, brother. Because this guy is in Wisconsin. No kidding. Well, yeah. I am I am searching for this name right now. William Norwood. He lives in Wisconsin. He's a personal trainer at something called Aim High Fitness. Lives in Racine, Wisconsin. Yep, I got him. Okay. Yep. He played. He played semi-pro football for the Racine Raiders. He's been an athlete his entire life. I think he trains celebrities as well. Impressive grip strength for sure, and I. I believe it's Joe Musselwhite that I'm quoting here. Um, this was the initial thing that uh, Jim Stepani Sr. put up. He says, over the past eight years, I've met some amazing guys and gals with unreal grip strength. This feat of strength blew me away. 83-pound fat bell with extreme fat grips. William Norwood of Aim High Fitness. Can this be matched? Question mark. And when you see the video, you'll you'll see exactly why he was so impressed because 
this was extremely dynamic work that he was doing. He, I mean, literally passing it back and forth. Generally, the challenge is just to row it. And grown men with lots of years of experience fail to do more than one row because they can't keep the fat grips extreme clenched onto that, the vertical bar of that implement. And he was popping it up in the air, catching it, and not letting it hit the ground a bunch of times. Amazing. Yeah, yeah I've got to check out some of those videos. I'm just kind of scrolling down his, his thing right now. He's one of those people with over 5,000 friends or whatever, so you can't. Oh, um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Never heard of the guy myself, man. I, uh, dude, there, there's there's so many people out there that are talented that really probably don't even know about grip. It's it's insane. Um, but dude, if he's anywhere near you, man, uh, I bet you could I bet you could strike up a a little workout routine with him and visit him every so often. I bet you guys could have some really serious killer workouts. And I'm telling you, man, some of the some of the best. Um, the best opportunities for me ever were working out with people that were stronger than me. And yeah, right. uh, it, it really raises your expectation level. You know, I remember I remember thinking, or I remember hearing Jim Wendler talking about how his strength levels went up immediately upon joining Westside Barbell. And it's because he no longer thought, like, a 400-pound bench press was any good. It was like he needed to bench 500 pounds. I, and I don't remember what exactly the numbers were, but like, you know, that's that's how he put it. Like the expectations increase, so you automatically make yourself better um, mentally. So like, dude, if you could partner up with him, man, I think you could. I think you could have some awesome workouts, man. Holy cow! Yeah, no, I'm 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 actually gonna look this guy up. Yeah, he's on the other side of the state, but I'm gonna look him up anyway. That's um. That's interesting. Yeah, it looks yeah, like man. he's got some got some power. Yeah, real fit. Somebody's yeah. got to show him the ropes, dude. It might as well be you, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I got plenty of plenty of toys to play with, so it's yeah, right in. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, dude. All right. Great. So just one well, more, another another sleeper out there then. <laughs> yeah, I just keep yeah, crawling dude. out of the woodwork. Yep. Yep. Beautiful. Yep. It's true. What else, man? What did I miss? Another. This is a neat one that caught my eye. Not so much for the 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 weight that w he was pulling, but rather the technique. I thought it it offered a lot. But uncomfortably strong over on Instagram, put up a mm -hmm. a, a video of him using the a, the grip pull, but mm -hmm. he had it hooked up to a, a crane scale. Yeah, and it looked like the other side was on the power rack. I thought, what a great way of that would like give you a good baseline on something and that's just a clever way you could really easily measure progress and it just looked I, I just never seen anybody doing that it seemed like a great training technique kind of on par with really like a like a hand dynamometer type of thing but yeah. it give you a good yeah. idea and you could use that for for so many things you know you, you, sure. you name it you know hub crush or whatever so yeah real clever you that's, know what uh, would be, that's a great way of doing that you know what would be cool is uh I don't even know how I would set this up, but um, if you could somehow attach the crane scale to maybe, you know, the, the foot of your power rack and then the other end attached to a blob, you know, it would be interesting to see how much force you could pull with the blob in your hand up against that. Oh, you know, right. I no idea. I mean, you, you, obviously you'd have to be able to really own the blob in order to even, you know, register a time. But, like, to, to do a sustained pull like that would be very interesting. But I don't know oh, how yeah. you would attach it to the blob. You'd, you'd probably have to use, like, some kind of a, I don't know, I'm thinking, like, a rubber band around the circumference of the blob and then attach the, the other hook of the, of the crane scale to the rubber band. You know, mm -hmm. you'd have to have a pretty strong rubber band. But, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then there's, you know, all kinds of... Uh, all kinds of possibilities with that. It doesn't have to be just with the grip pole. It could be with anything that you can use your imagination for. Oh yeah, though that was a that's a really fantastic way of doing that. You can get an exact idea of where you're at on things and really, really measure your your progress real precisely. So yeah, that was I, yeah, I just sure. wanted to throw that out. And that was that was neat stuff. Yeah. 
And um, uh, on the see? subject, no, go ahead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just on the subject nope. of of other other training ideas, you know, Gil Goodman all the time. He's been putting out these technique uh, Tuesday clips on Instagram. I don't know if you caught any of those at all or not. Done different things, you know, hand positioning on the flask and gripper setting. And, uh, yeah. you know, even showed some blob drags and stuff. And a real neat one he showed, and he gave credit to Matt Ken. I'd seen um, Matt Ken put this out on one of his videos too, but it's a different way of, of deloading the blob. Mm-hmm. For anybody out there that's trying to lift that, where he used almost like a, a, a teeter-totter type deal, you know, where he yeah. had a, a, a dumbbell laying down on the board across it. And just a right. great way of, of popping it into the air, let you feel it and kind of, you know, ride it back down. Just something that, you know, a lot of people, I mean, that's only the second time I'd seen something like that posted. Mm-hmm. And so probably a lot of people aren't aren't aware of that, but that's just one more technique to, to get people that much closer to, to doing some of these things. Yeah, it's another so, another tool in your toolbox, and it doesn't cost a lot of money. Yep, yep. I'm real glad that, you know, some of the, the top-end guys, you know, like Gil and yourself, you know, are taking the time to put some of these things out there because that's really beneficial to the to the people that are working on a lot of these things that you guys tend to make look really easy. So, right, yeah. A lot of great information. Yeah, well, uh, give it a try. See how it works out in your training, brother. Yeah, yep. Um, you got any more feats, man? What else? Did you see anything else? The um, let me get back to that here right now. Brandon Gerber just posted one on on Instagram. I'm trying to see if I can load that back up here. Look like he was doing. It. We don't see a lot of grip training stuff out of him. Um, at least I haven't been anyway. But mm-hmm. he had a neat one. What was he? What was he hitting here? Did some um. Oh, he was trying to do a double 35 uh, plate pinch and clean and press, which oh. <laughs> I'm definitely – have, have you seen that done before? I, I haven't seen anybody even talk about that. So yes, a, I have seen that done before. Um, oh, and, okay. Uh, and Andrew Derniat did it a few years ago. Um, if I have my story straight, Paul Knight actually thought of doing that uh, one day. And he brought 35s over and, like, donated them to the gym because they fit together really nice. And um, I guess he dreamt it up or whatever, and he was talking about it and brought them over, and and Andrew got them. And I think it's up on his YouTube channel. But it's been several years. I would say that was 2012 when that that was going on. But I I haven't seen too much of it since. So uh, so did Brandon get that? No, but it looks like he's close. It really looks like it's it's right around the corner for him. Kind of got it about cool. midway up. So, so yeah, yeah the, the strength is there. Just a little more time. Hard to say if it's something he's working on or he was just more or less having some fun. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, good stuff nonetheless. Man, I'll tell you what. That kid, that's somebody that's come so far. That's like, you know, I would say – maybe 2010, he set a world record for his weight class in the in the two-hand pinch. And it was like 180 pounds or something. It, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a huge number as far as like, you know, what the, what the world record is now. But he, he set it. Like I think he might have been the first one to actually establish the world record in that weight class back when he was like 17 years old or 18 years old. So um, I, it's, it's cool because I've seen him progress from just being a, a young, snot-nosed punk, basically, you know, and now he's like a grown man, you know, solid dude. His numbers have come up by hundreds of pounds in the deadlift, for instance. So... Uh, it's been really awesome watching him develop over the years. He's he's a very good, knowledgeable strength athlete. Nice. Yeah, I knew he was a, a lighter competitor starting out. I guess I didn't realize he was he was that young when he got started yeah. at it. But um, yeah, yeah, dude, he bought a he bought a T-shirt off me years ago, and it was a medium. <laughs> and now he wears like an XL. Yeah. <laughs> he said nice. he said I got to get a new shirt like this. This is my this is the favorite my favorite shirt of all time. 
And I was like, uh, well, why don't you wear it anymore? And he said, it was, well, it was a medium. It doesn't fit him. I was like, enough of the excuses. Cut the sleeves off and put that shirt on. Let's go. And he's like, no, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna happen. It's, it's like, I guess, like the torso. Uh, his torso is too big, you know. Um, and I, he's probably grown now or something. But I'm like, hey, dude, when I was a kid, when I was like 10 years old mowing lawns for my mom and dad, I would be out there with, with like just a half shirt on, dude, and I'd come away with like the, the, the farmer's tan on the belly and not on the chest. You know, it used to be it used to be in style to wear clothes like that. So you might as well put that shirt back on. You know, I'm really tired of these excuses. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. Good. I didn't see that, man. What what other feats have I missed? I'm get, I'm I'm getting starting to get upset that I'm missing all these awesome feats. Yeah. Tim Butler had a couple other ones out there. I don't know if you saw. He posted um, some. He had some blob facelifts. He was working on a couple other things. Let me try to see if I can bring that up. It was something I think he'd hit at your place, but I don't know that he would officially hit it in training yet, or mm-hmm. or on his own own stuff. Here, I'm gonna try to see if I can bring that up quick. But it looks like he he must be feeling better because he's getting some of these getting some of these feet down again. Oh, yeah. I think he's just Cobra Kai, dude. I think he's just <laughs> Cobra Kai, and pain does not exist in his dojo. Let's see here. Yeah, lots of lots of karate. What's with all the all the Karate Kid references? I don't know. It just something? keeps fitting. It just oh, keeps fitting geez. so well. I've just I've been seeing all these these memes out there like all week long about this. You know, different things. You know, some some John Kreese pictures and. And that well, not, it's not you know, you know who I'm talking about. It's not his real name. But then some, yeah. some even um, even some some Johnny pictures and everything like that. And I just yeah. you know, no no Miyagi things or Daniel son or anything like that. But just kind of yeah. a, just your classic bad guys. But yeah, I didn't know if there was some some strange reference I missed or something or what. Or if it was a I don't know some some Chuck Norris thing. You know, Chuck Norris turned what 77 this week. Right. So. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know if it was a spin off of that or something or, or yeah. why. Cats so. I, I saw I saw the commercial with Chuck Norris and they said cats say that they have Chuck Norris like reflexes. <laughs> 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 there are so many good ones out there. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. the the the, uh, the reason I guess the reason with the karate kid for me was I saw Josh Dale posted a meme about uh get him a body bag. And uh, I think we were saying that one time at a contest years ago. I, I can't remember. So it's just been kind of like fresh in my mind. But uh, the, the other thing, Alan, what you don't realize is everybody's got that movie wrong. Daniel was the guy that was the, the evil henchman. He was the heel <laughs> in that movie. Did you, did you ever see that? There's, a, you there's know, an I, actual, there's an analysis on one of those like, it's like it's like one of those websites that always shows up on your Facebook feed, you know, and it's like I don't, like trivia type stuff, and it's like ten reasons why Daniel Son was the real bad guy in the Karate Kid. Did you ever see that? I I have. I don't remember much about it, but I I do know I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna look that up. Yeah. Yeah, dude. You got it's, it's pro- I think it's on YouTube, so everybody should look that up. I mean, everybody should like our video right now cuz it's going to help grip be presented before more people in search engines. Uh you should start using the this week in grip hashtag and you should search for the video that shows that Daniel was actually the bad guy in the karate kid. Yep. Nice. I didn't want to make a point to look at that here. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that the other cool actually... thing, did we bleed you dry finally? Yep, yep, I am out. That that covered Okay. It. Okay, great. Did you see, I only have, I guess, one more thing to cover. And, well, two more things, I guess. 
Uh, the first one was like a random thing that showed up on my Facebook that I somehow have never seen before. And it was the 36 Chamber of Shaolin wrist training. Did you see that? No. Okay. <laughs> so it's it's not funny. I don't know why I'm laughing, but um, it's just it's just unbelievable that I've never never seen this before. But uh, basically. Um, I'm going to play this just so I can give you like a rundown. It's like there's these, uh, it's a bunch of, you know, Asian, uh, you know, like martial arts dudes. Like, I don't know if they're ninjas or whatever. Well, they're Shaolin. They're Shaolin monks training, okay? And they're in this room, and uh, there's it shows a series of these, like, big long sticks with a weight on the end. And... The, the trainee has to pick it up with one hand and uh, hit a gong with this big, long stick. It's like a gong clubbing tool. I don't, I don't know what you call it. But um, it, it's, it's pretty cool, man. You, you, should, you should Google this and watch it. Everybody should. It was, it was pretty interesting. I, I've never seen this before. And it's, it's from a movie that's probably from, like, the mid-'70s, maybe even early-'70s. I recognize a bunch of the actors for having been in other movie roles. And uh, what's funny is when they hand him this thing, he can't even pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> he, can't even, he can't even lift it, dude. So, um, you know, it's like, uh, it's like when some people first try the, the sledge choke. You know, they, they just can't even get their head wrapped around how they actually, what they're doing here, you know what I mean? Um, and, uh, so the, the student is supposed to ring the gong in time with the teacher who is kind of taking like a stick and hitting this like two piece shell item. So you hear clunk and then you hear gong, clunk, gong, and then multiple teachers start striking this little thing. So you hear clunk, gong, clunk, gong, clunk, like that. And then finally the dude, like, has to drop the, the stick because his hand is just, you know, it, it looks like he's going for multiple reps in the sledge choke. So you got to watch this, Alan. you got to see it. And uh, the, what, this, what this made me think of is what, uh, was, like, how many, how many examples are there out there in old movies of, of grip strength, you know? Um, I have never seen this before. There's probably dozens, if not hundreds, of other examples. So I thought what we could do is have people post, like, other examples of grip strength training or grip strength feats in the movie. And it doesn't necessarily have to be – like, this is, like, obviously, like, legitimate grip training. Like, if you did this, you would get seriously strong – but there might also be other things out there that are just kind of like not real. Like I saw one time a clip where uh, Chuck Norris actually stopped a saw blade with his pinch grip. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see that? No, I didn't. I didn't. Dude, it was, uh, I don't know what show it was, but the guy was like cutting a tree down <laughs> with this giant saw. And Chuck Norris, he didn't want he wanted to he wanted to protect the tree right so he goes over <laughs> and he stops the saw by pinching it I mean, he pinched the blade <laughs> <laughs> was this was this a recent thing or something or, or what no man it looked like it looked around the era of uh like uh walker texas ranger it oh okay like, okay like, like the the aging of Chuck's face, which obviously happens slower to him than everyone else in the world. Right. Um, it, it just looked to be around that time frame. And, and he had like this <laughs> sweet, dude, he had this sweet like uh, Kentucky waterfall mullet going. And <laughs> he just kind of looked, at, look, he pinched that blade, man. And he just looked at the guy in shame, like, how dare you try to cut down my friend? Uh, man, it was it was awesome. So, like, I invite people, and I'd like to cover these in the shows if possible. So, if people can uh, 
just like send a link or uh, what what would be great is if you could put actually put the comment on the YouTube channel uh or below the video it would be great and then uh, whether legitimate examples of grip strength training in movies or outlandish freakish uh would never happen in real life feats unless you're Chuck Norris um Please post them because, uh, man, we could have hours, hours of entertainment from, from this stuff. Just unbelievable. Yeah, I'm going to keep my my eyes open for that kind of stuff. i got to find that one about Chuck Norris, too. That is hysterical. Oh, gosh, you got to see it, man. you got to see yeah, it. It's, that it's is, just that unbelievable. Is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like I think the I think the first time I told I told one of my friends about it one time years ago, and I think I actually cried. I was laughing so hard at it. So yeah, man. Holy cow! <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. And that with that, dude. With that, I am now bled dry. Okay. All right. And well, you you're you're all done too, right? I am. Yep, that cleaned me out. I I was just cool. checking back through, and and I have I have covered it all. So yeah, all right, awesome, cool. Well, I guess that wraps up another one. That's what that's episode nine now. So we've been we've yeah. been at this for about oh nine weeks or so. So another another good one. Mhm. No doubt, brother. Yep. All right. Well, as usual, then everybody, make sure you you like the video and subscribe and and comment down below about what Jed just suggested. And if anybody knows of, of any other sleepers out there doing these great feats like William Norwood and, and the newer guys we're seeing coming on the scene, the, the Tanner Merkels, let us know so we can keep track of everybody and get us some, get some better content going. And I guess that is it. So we'll, uh, we'll see you next time with another one.